This presentation shows how to determine if two populations have similar or different characteristics. We do this by comparing, as I show here, the uh, means of two populations. We could also be interested in comparing the proportions of a certain uh, desired outcome across the two populations right there. And for that matter, we might also be interested in comparing the variances, which in financial market terms, um, a variance is a measure of the volatility or risk of an investment. So we could be comparing the variances of two different types of investments. So these are the three key parameters of a population based upon which we can make inferences on the similarities or, or the lack thereof of the two populations. In this first presentation though, I'm going to discuss the comparison of two population means as uh, illustrated in these two uh, normal distributions. One aspect of such a study is to look at the paired um, observations in a pre-post type of analysis. This is also called matched obs observations. The other is to directly compare the means of two independent populations. So in a paired observation study, as I illustrate here, we're pretty much doing a pre-post analysis where we seek to determine if after a, a treatment or some intervention of some kind, there has been a change in outcomes. Um, examples include drug treatments, like here, you know, you um, uh, look at the condition of this subject prior to administering this drug and then check the condition again to see if there has been a change. If, if there has been a remedy, for example, this could be a blood pressure pill. So you take uh, the patient's blood pressure prior to then administer this pill and then afterward you take the blood pressure again to see if in fact there has been a change. So it's pre-post type of analysis and it's matched sampling because it's this, the same underlying elementary unit or subject in the study. Other uh, examples would also include like, taste tests. You know, they give you Coke and say, hey, drink it and score it on some kind of a liquor scale. And then give, they give you Pepsi afterward and say, now score it to see if, in fact, um, there is preference of uh, one product over the other. Also, work performance. You know, you um, ex evaluate uh, employees to see, you know, using some kind of criterion uh, regarding their productivity and then you put them through a training program and then you, um, you know, you test them again to see how they shape out. Anyhow, these are the conventional statements of hypothesis and for match sampling, this is going to be our test statistic, which is T distributed uh, with N minus 1 degrees of freedom. This denominator right here is the standard error of the differences between the two data sets that we're going to be analyzing. As usual, the null hypothesis goes with the symbol H sub 0, and the alternative goes um, uh, by the symbol H sub 1 or H sub A. Here's a quick example, and you can pause this tape and uh, read it. However, um, this is a case where we are intervening of, uh, in a way, you know, trying to see how um, students, um, uh, trying to test the critical uh, thinking skills of students. So uh, prior to putting them through a, a lecture um, module, you know, we do a pretest to kind of see how they uh, score on a critical thinking type of assessment. And then afterward, we um, administer the learning module to help them um, improve their abilities to um, uh, make reasoned judgments of sorts. And then afterward, we give them uh, the same test to see a similar test to see how they score. So for person number one, for example, you can see there is a four point improvement. Person number um, 15, there is no improvement, as you can see. Person number 20, as well as about three or four other individuals, you can see there's actually um, a deterioration of sorts. 
uh, in terms of your improvement. So this column that you see here simply measures the difference between the pre-score and the post-score. You know, we're matching these two scores, hence the term matched sampling. So all we got to do is simply take the average of these scores and if the average comes out to be zero or close to it, then we would conclude that on average the uh, learning module, the intervention that was applied, um, didn't amount to a hill of beans. If it came out to be negative, then we'll say, oh wow, that things got worse after the fact. If it came out positive, then we'll say, aha, it looks like uh, this uh, training program or learning module, whatever the intervention is, it has proven effective. In this case, it came out to be a positive uh, mean, right? The average difference, 2.15. But we're going to have to ask the question, is this improvement statistically significant? So we go ahead and uh, test that. So this is going to be a one-tail test. If you go back here to this uh, story, it says that the goal is to determine if, in general, the new learning module leads to improvements in the student's critical thinking skills. So since this is what we're hoping to conclude on, uh, that goes in the alternative. And of course, you know, this being a one-tail test, the tail is going to be on the right side in keeping with the direction of the inequality in the alternative. So we calculate the T statistic and we came up with a 3.27 which as you can see exceeds the critical value of 1.729. Now mark you, the T statistic has a T distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. In this example we have 20 observations and therefore 19 degrees of freedom. So at the 5% level we're going to have to look up the critical value and I go here Alright, so 19 degrees of freedom, you see it right here. On this T table, look at it very carefully, it tells you uh, the critical values for uh, one tail and two tails. So for the 0.05 level, which is 5% level of significance, one tail, we work our way down here and we catch the, um, uh, we catch the uh, critical value of 1.729, right? and that's what you see right here and it's for that reason that we reject the null hypothesis because the calculated t exceeds it it lies within the significance region and so we conclude that there is evidence the learning module has proved effective so going forward we can also do a t-test uh, quite so easily on excel so let's go there i'm right here let's pull this up Right there. Okay, let's do this. Let's uh, use this example here. So this is actually the data set on the um, critical thinking um, assessment. So what we're going to do to use Excel, we're only going to be dealing with the original data set, not the differences. The differences are only used if you're doing a manual uh, calculation, as I showed on the PowerPoint presentation. So we're going to go to data and data analysis and here we're looking for t-test paired two samples from mean and OK it. For variable 1, as you can see, um, I'm going to go post-test first. Well, it really doesn't matter, but lo logically speaking, I want the uh, outcome that should show an improvement to come first on Excel. But like I said, no big deal. All right, so highlight the next one and then hypothesized mean difference is zero. Check labels right here so the computer knows the first row here contains non-numeric labels. Click here for outputs and then click in here. While cursor is blinking there, roll down somewhere on the spreadsheet and then OK it. All right, and that's your results here, which as you can see I already did before and copied it out here into uh, Excel and as you can see that's our T statistic calculated T statistic you have a choice between comparing this calculated T to the critical value one tail now not two tail right comparing it to one tail and concluding that since this exceeds this we should reject the null hypothesis and go with the alternative that there has been an improvement or 
you can look at the p-value which as you can see and compare that to your alpha level alpha of 0.05 as you can see this p-value is way less than it in fact it is less than any of the three conventional levels of significance that's the 0.01 for 1 percent 0.05 for 5 percent and 0.10 for 10 percent and that's a wrap